This video is going to be about the picture of the black hole which was released recently. Now if you don't know about it, then whatever rock you've been living under is it's really working. Because this thing is all over the internet and yet if you happen to be someone utterly unaware of all of this, let me give you some context. On April 10th, uh, 2019, astronomers released the first ever picture of a black hole. Now you would say that we did have pictures of black hole before but those were speculative like we had never observed a true black hole directly before we did have strong evidence for their existence like studying the x-ray spectrum of the accretion disks or watching stars being slingshot around the galactic core so we knew they were there but all of that was just indirect observation this for the first time was a direct photograph how this was done was through eight perfectly synchronized telescopes across the surface of the planet. The data from these telescopes were sort of brought together so that they act like a virtual telescope the size of planet Earth. That's the highest resolution we can get with our current technology. It was a gargantuan effort and it took years to pull off, but finally we have it. The first ever picture of a black hole. How this was done, how was the picture taken, how did all of this work, what does the picture even mean? I have links for everything in the description, videos and articles for people who are genuinely interested. But the reason why I am making this video is not to cover the whole process or the method that was used. Instead, I want to think of its implications. Its implications not as a scientific discovery, but as a phenomenon. I mean, think about what just happened. A bunch of apes captured <laughs> the picture of a black hole. That's a huge achievement for organic life. Consciousness. What do you think something like this means for consciousness? Heck, where does consciousness come from? Based on what we know so far, our best guess is that consciousness is a product of the brain. Now, many of you might disagree with that. People might believe that souls exist and that the essence of a human being cannot be reduced to just brain chemistry and brain structure. While that's a very popular argument, I'm afraid it's not a very strong one. But that's not the discussion we're trying to get into. Cartesian dualists might want to tell you all sorts of things and might want to invoke all kinds of wizardry to make their point. But the thing is, nobody cares anymore, Cartesian dualists, so you must move on now. Have to say that. For the sake of this video, just sail into the boat of a naturalistic explanation of consciousness and see where it takes you. Cool? I bet most people did not understand what I just said. Our brains have evolved for billions of years, but not to do science. This blob of meat that's inside your skull, this is meant to navigate the landscape, find food, find mates to make babies with, and to just avoid predators. Our goal as an organism is to survive and thrive and multiply. It is not to reason or to do science. Think about everything that had to go into making the world what it is today. We first tamed fire, then we tamed wild animals, we started farming, we invented writing to keep track of all the food we were producing by that farming, we invented war and money and nation states, we have literally erected structures of stone and metal and glass and mathematics scattered over the surface of the planet, focusing and functioning as a single eye, looking into the deepest, furthest, darkest corners of the universe, capturing the images of the most mysterious objects ever known to humanity. Wow. Humans, as weird or stupid they are, they deserve a pat on the back for this one at least. Speaking of our scientific competence, I don't think this is the best we have ever done. I mean, sure, there have been greater things in the past that were much more difficult to achieve than this. Uh, my personal favorite is the discovery of gravitational waves. Because, because when you think about it, what are gravitational waves? They are ripples in the fabric of space and time. <laughs> what does that even mean? These are two black holes, billions of light years away and therefore billions of years ago, colliding into each other. This collision is so intense, it is distorting the very nature of space and time and apes on the other side of the universe using interferometers scattered across this planet's surface are able to detect that. I mean, that should not even be possible. What a good time to be alive, where we have interferometers and the discovery of gravitational waves and 
black hole photographs okay maybe not the best time to be alive i agree no actually the best time to be alive because everything from average life expectancy to the economy everything's growing like the world seems bad because media regardless of how awesome i personally think the discovery of gravitational waves is the reason why this picture is so important is because it's a picture and pictures are how we perceive reality okay this is going to get a bit complicated so let's take a simple example think about you you as the viewer while i'm making this video i'm aware that you exist i'm thinking about you i am making this for you some of you i know many of you i don't i hope the number of viewers that i don't know outweighs the number of viewers i do know so you know to all my friends share this video you exist you have existed for all your life and you are as real as the sun or the moon or anything else in the universe i know that you exist but i'm not directly aware of your presence right now you are an abstraction to me you are a thought you are inside my head i know you are real but to me you're not as real as say this laptop because i can see and touch and feel this laptop right now but i cannot see and touch and feel you you are real to me in my head but not as real as things can get i hope this is making sense uh same is the case with black holes so far we had a lot of evidence indicating the existence of black hole like i mentioned before and we knew they were real but they were not as real as directly observed things can get i'm not saying that our perception makes things less or more or less real i'm just saying that to us they are less real i know this is like i should have scripted this better but hang on with me i have not seen every single viewer of this video but i have evidence for your existence in the form of youtube comments or in the form of youtube analytics same way we had never seen a black hole before but we had ample of evidence indicating their presence but just as your existence would become a lot more personal and real to me if we were to meet right now same way in a vague sense the existence of black holes have just got more real to us it's because we perceive the world through our senses sight vision smell sound these are all things that are the building blocks of our reality that is how we make sense as primitive organisms at least of our reality now we do have mathematics and logic these things help us understand the world better around us sure logic can act as a sense it can tell us about the existence of certain things and with reasonable confidence we can say that it's true but logic is not a part of our fundamental biology it's not a part of, it's something abstract that we have invented to help us transcend our biological borders it's not at the core of our sensory experience and for some reason our sensory experience is very special to us as it plays a huge role in shaping who we are and what we become previously we have had all sorts of abstractions and logical reasons to believe into black holes we had all this evidence and everything from mathematics to our physics to observations of the galaxies told us that they exist but when we look at a real picture of a black hole it has a very fundamental and a very different impact because now we are not just using our tools and our logical rational methods to understand these things we are making a direct observation we are using our core fundamental senses to take a look at something as beautiful as a black hole our reality is based on our senses what our experience is the experience of this universe that we have is fundamentally authored by our senses and when something like this something so abstract and strange falls into our senses it becomes a part of our qualia it becomes a part of our experience of the universe and because what we experience is what we become it becomes a part of us am i making this sound too cheesy maybe i am but we are talking about black holes and experiences and qualia of course it it's got to be cheesy take a moment to appreciate this our senses our minds our bodies they evolved on this single planet i must i must have said that for like the 
thousandth time now, <laughs> right now. It's my favorite line, you can safely assume that. Generation and generation of natural selection, brutal natural selection, and all these environmental forces shaping the human organism into becoming this thing that's talking to you right now, and then using what we have become, we go on to build civilization and the scientific method and tools that can literally translate distant radio waves into perceivable images of black holes and, and, and make these abstract things a part of our being, a part of our consciousness and our experience. That is mind-bogglingly strange, yet incredibly awesome. I have no words for this right now, but I hope I'm able to communicate what just happened. I, I want you to look at the whole situation, not from a human perspective. You'll be like, yeah, a bunch of scientists, they discovered shit, they always do that. It's not just that. Look at it from a neutral, bird's eye, non-anthropocentric, if I said that right, perspective. Think of it like as if you're a cloud looking at the world full of these things called people and the stuff they do and just try to comprehend what they have managed to accomplish. You are probably the most complex thing in the universe, at least our brains are, right? I mean, can you think about anything that's a little more complicated? No, calculus doesn't count. <laughs> the brain, the human brain is incredible and we still don't understand it. And then we have black holes. like. What the heck even are they? And by having a direct picture of this black hole, consciousness, for the first time, using its basic faculties of sensory experience, is now directly trying to comprehend and wrap itself around the concept and the experience of a black hole. This is so incredibly mind-twisting because we have two of the most weird and mysterious things for the first time coming directly in contact with each other. Now, you might say that we did know about black holes before and there's nothing strange or new about it, but that's what I'm trying to point out. That's the subtle thing, the subtle point that I'm trying to make. Everything we knew about black holes before was either an artistic explanation or an artistic speculation rather, or a mathematical explanation. These were abstractions. This was imagination and speculation. This was reasoning and logic and art that had got us to them. But for the first time, we are making a direct sensory experience of these black holes. And that is why I feel that it's a big moment for consciousness, for organisms, for life and for us. Because something as strange and as far away and as complicated and mysterious as a black hole was never supposed to be directly comprehended by a bunch of apes moving on a moat of dust. But it happened. We did it. And that is what makes it so mind-boggling and so amazing. What happens when the most complicated entity in the universe makes a direct observation of the most mysterious object in the universe? Self-awareness. As Carl Sagan puts it, we are the universe becoming aware of itself. Truly speaking, from a non-human bird's eye view perspective, matter has collected and organized itself in a small pocket of space somewhere floating through the galaxy or through the universe. And now it's trying to point its gaze outwards into the universe, looking at black holes and galaxies and studying the motion of galaxies and superclusters. We being parts of this universe are looking outward, trying to figure out and understand what other parts of the universe look like. Again, if I have to draw an analogy with the body, if this particular example of the black hole is to be taken, then our telescopes are the eyes of the universe, the supercomputers that process this information coming through the telescopes are the visual cortex of the universe and humanity as a whole, our entire civilization, is the cerebral cortex of the universe. We are the thinking and the feeling bits of the cosmos. I don't know which guy said this, I think it was Carl Sagan again, but nonetheless it's true. So take a look at the picture of this black hole again. Realize that when light left the black hole, it was 54 million years ago. Humans were not even around. Uh, the planet was full of mammals and lush green forests. It was the Eocene epoch, I believe. Yeah. 
and it's been traveling the light has been traveling all this time to reach you or rather to reach our telescopes where it would be processed into digital information and then rendered as an image only to be streamed across the internet through this video into your eyes so that consciousness can have a direct sensory experience of a black hole so that the most complex thing in the universe might meet the most mysterious object. If this isn't fascinating to you, then I don't know what will be. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was really fun to me. It was more of a spontaneous idea. I just thought, oh, I need to talk about this and had to do this real quick. So it might not be very good quality, but this is really truly from the heart. If you like stuff like this and want to see more, then please subscribe. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Like and share this video. I will hopefully, if things go smooth, we'll see you soon in the next one. Bye-bye and have a good day.